and welcome back to my channel, my joy channel. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting really nervous and overwhelmed. Um, today, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because uh, this is gonna be the second upload back to back that I've done. Um, I might try to upload more regularly on this channel. The problem is literally just having the energy, the time, the health, which I'll get into in another video. So I, I wanna let you guys know, I know most of you know I'm back. I've been back, or some of you know, if you've seen my video, if you haven't, go check it out. I'll have links in the description, links up here. I, like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing with this channel yet, but I'm thinking I might try some regular uploads. So if you like videos like this, please let me know in the comments so I can kind of get a feel for where this is and what you guys, you know, what you like. Um, I like, you know, it, it's just gonna be hard for me to kind of figure out an uploading schedule because right now I'm on my other channel, Katie's Insight. That's the one I'm working on right now. It's financial stimulus news to help you guys find stimulus money in your area and show you kind of what's coming on the pipeline with different things. So make sure and go subscribe and hit notifications because um, a lot of times that money runs out quickly and the first people who access it get it. And I want you guys to be the first people. So subscribe and hit notifications. Or if you like this one, you know, subscribe to Joy Sparkle VS and hit notifications there. I think I might change the name. So I don't know. So if you watch this video later and the name's different, that's why. But you know, if you like these kind of videos, I'm, I'm happy to have you here as well. So, okay, let me just try to get on with the video and what am I actually gonna talk about? But uh, today's video, like I, I like to focus on things I think are kind of more pop culture or uh, things that are trending. Um, always helps in the search and the algorithms, which is always really good. But, um, you know, I feel like on this channel, I'm gonna be, if I do anything with it, I'm gonna put a really big emphasis on physical and mental health because I feel like this is a subject that's so under understood <laughs> misunderstood under understood isn't a word um it's very very misunderstood still and uh i would like to uh there are some things i would like to talk about that i feel like we don't quite hear about and uh one thing i want to go into today is relationships so and you guys might not know this about me for the people that do watch me because you've seen a very sick chaotic version of me um i'm very analytical like I'm constantly sitting and anal analyzing stuff all the time. I could be filming a video talking to y'all and I'm analyzing a couple things in the back of my brain. Like, and I know that probably doesn't make sense, but like talking and being kind of entertaining for me or trying to at least if you find it that way is uh, it's like autopilot for me. I can kind of turn that on autopilot and I'm constantly analyzing and weighing information. I do a lot of playing like devil's advocate about things. So I'll do, even if there's like an opinion or something that I think to myself, I will debate that opinion quite heavily. Um, I feel like that's a way that I can find more truths to a situation, get more wisdom from something, kind of be better grounded in a subject. I feel like the more information, the more sides you can see to something, the better understanding we can have. And when we have better understanding, we can have better solutions to problems. Also, let me highlight, I'm wearing a rainbow shirt. I love this sweater. I got some new rainbow sweaters, I swear. And I have some more to get when I can find a, a few more coins. Maybe I can make YouTube work and I can get some more cheap rainbow sweaters from China. As Trump says, China. But I wanted to talk about relationships a little bit and mental illness. Um, I've really been, okay, I've been doing this deep dive. So y'all know I'm 36, I'll be 37 this year. It kind of overwhelms me when I say I'm gonna be 37 because I'm looking around going, how on earth am I still alive? Like, is it just me or, or like anybody watching? Have you hit a certain age and you just really didn't like see yourself that old? So I'm kind of in the same boat. Well, on top of that, I've had so many crazy, you know, life damaging, life almost ending health issues, right? So a little bit different for me. Um, I didn't know that I was going to make it to this point. But it never, I just never really saw myself as getting that old. I mean, I'm grateful, don't get me wrong, happy to be here, right? But then again, maybe we just, we don't. When you're young, you don't really think about aging, right? It just kind of feels like time is infinite. And maybe that's because those centers of your brain, cause and effect haven't developed yet or whatever. I've been doing a lot of analysis on relationships. Now, I'm 36. You guys know I'm in a really weird situation. I'm technically single, but I live with an ex. Um, and it's very strange. So uh, we're, we're friends at this point and he has been wonderful to me. I would not be alive without him and I will scream that to the hilt and the mountaintops all day, every day. I just, I'm so grateful for him. Uh, however, with that being said, I'm 36. I have feel like I've never had like a real marriage. Uh, not to say I haven't been married, but like a real marriage. Um, I've never had kids. And because of my physical conditions, I don't, it would probably not be safe for me to. Um, 
I, I'm not saying I couldn't, but I don't think it'd be safe. And you know, even though like, and this is another thing, like people don't tell you to any of the younger people that are, if you are younger that are watching, I don't know why you'd be interested in this, but if you are, people don't really talk to you about what happens to your body hormonally. I didn't want, I was one of those people. I never wanted to get kids or I never want to have kids. Didn't want to get married. Like, you know, most little girls, they're planning their dream weddings, right? And their, their, their dream husbands and the family. And I've just never, I've never been about that. Not, no disrespect. We need people who are focused on family and raising good people and putting good people in society. That is a cornerstone. It's just, it's never felt like it's for me. Um, but I have wanted, I think what I've kind of boiled it down to is I want people I feel like I can connect with. And it doesn't happen for me very often. And that's okay, right? Like, I'm an odd duck. I'm a very odd duck. I'm a highly spiritual person, but you can't nail me down to anything. I take lots of different things from different places. It's kind of my own amalgamation of, of things. I just call it tools that help me get by in life. But that is a big factor and focus in my life. And most of the time, I'm kind of alone in that. Um, most people haven't gone through the type of extreme illness or been able to come out of it and start to rebuild a life. I'm grateful, but you know, I'm alone. Most people stay sick or they leave, you know, unfortunately. Um, and, and you know, I'm at that age where for most women, the clock is ticking as they say, their biological clock. And for those young people, what does that even mean? Well, for somebody who never wanted kids for so long, and didn't understand it. At some point, even if you don't want kids, this is really weird. You have some type of hormonal flip in your system and suddenly you are physically, you are having these physical, instincts to want children even if you don't want them and it messes with you mentally and emotionally that's the biological like and it's it's a thing it actually happens so as much as i can say i don't want kids right now that'd be horrible it's not good for me sometimes every so often my hormones kick in and that's all of a sudden it just feels like i have to go make a baby this is weird now like every instinct you just don't act upon it right it's not something i'm just not going to go out and make that happen some people do we know a lot of people who just act off of their instincts but I've been doing a lot of contemplation about relationships because I think I've come to this place of there's a bit more peace with me. I, I feel like I've accepted certain, like I've accepted my situation. I've accepted where I'm at in life. I've accepted that things could change, but I've accepted that they, there's a big reality they won't. And that's okay. And what I mean by that is I mean in my situation with relationships, because for me, it's a bit different. First of all, I have to get a ton of money. <laughs> so I can be on my own. Being on my own for me is different than other people because I have to make sure I have enough money to sustain myself for the rest of my life and have enough money to have medical help if I need it because I don't have any help around me. And my friend list has been desecrated over the years because when you're chronically sick, you can't really go out with people and do things. And uh, you can't, you don't really want to talk to people because your updates are miserable. So you kind of lose your friendships. Um, but you know, there's, there's, for me, there's different elements. I would need to get on my own. I would need to have a lot of money to be able to do that and I've made a lot of money before if I am lucky fingers crossed and if whatever the universe is deems it so then it will happen as long as I do my best to put forth my energy as I can with my health to try to create something but I've really been thinking a lot about relationships and I've been posing this question and by the way it's not like I'm posing you know some question that's gonna blow your mind I think we've all you know, most of us have had this thought before. Can relationships really work? Not to say you can't stay in them, but can you actually stay in a healthy, functioning relationship long term? This is what I've been thinking about. And let me kind of explain where I'm coming from. I'm not saying you can't, okay? What I will say is I think it's very hard and I feel like there are factors I've started to break down and boil that have helped me understand it that I thought, you know what, just for the sake of having a fun upload and sharing info, let me share this and see if anybody else feels the same way. Maybe it'll help somebody else. Maybe not. Maybe I'm talking it. Nobody who, and really I am. Right now I'm just talking to an inanimate object in a room that will at some point be a you, whatever a you is, and hey, you, hey. <laughs> but, um... This is something I've really been thinking about. And I'm not trying to, you know, a lot of people will go through a bad breakup, bad relationship, you know, maybe their family dissolves in some way and they get really bitter. And, and, and I'm not coming at it from a bitter perspective. I'm trying to come at it from a, almost like an analytical scientific perspective, um, if that makes sense. And I'm not coming at it like, well, I'm too old for this, that, and my chances are gone. And you know, it, it's, it's not about that. Cause I'm, I've made peace with where I'm at. I've made peace with it. It can change 
for the better or for the worse. And I'm just going to be grateful for whatever little gifts I'm given and that come into my life. That's one thing about coming out of some real dark times, like, you know, really horrible physical illness. You have such a depth of gratitude. People are always like, why are you so happy and bubbly? What drugs are you on? I'm like, oh, my nervous system doesn't allow me to do drugs. It literally doesn't. Instead, I'm just super grateful for every little thing, including just getting to hang out with y'all. I'm so grateful. So relationships. It feels like to me relationships. Now, there are a few reasons I feel like I've understood why relationships break down. Um, one big thing that people don't really talk about, I feel like like when it comes, well, like when it came to, you know, my parental figures and, and, and like a lot of the boomers and hey, boomers, hey, no disrespect with what I'm saying. You know, we're all just trying to figure stuff out. But I feel like a lot of our parents didn't, at least in my situation. And you know what? If you were a boomer and didn't do this, more power to you. But a lot of the boomer parents that I grew up around and knew, they didn't really communicate well with their kids on certain subjects, or at least not with me. That's why I'm really big on in my videos. I'm like, let's remove buzzwords, buzz phrases, fr uh, you know, uh, frill and, and pomp, and let's get down to the actual issues and examine them. Because I feel like a lot of times we can end up getting lost in these weird assumptions that we make up in that that can then become cultural norms. Kind of like you could do any mean thing or any weird thing and you could be like, oh, it's the 90s and that was supposed to be okay. Or anybody can screw you over and they can go, it's just business, it's not personal. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Um, kind of justifying bad behavior, which I, or just miscommunicating different behaviors that could be unhealthy, right? So this is what I've been thinking about about relationships. So first of all, one thing that you're not really told is you can't just find somebody you have feelings for. Now, we have songs and we have different things like Tina Turner, What's Love Got to Do With It? Yes, girl, I love Tina. Yes, girl. Um, but it's not really broken down in a way that I think is really understandable for people until it's too late. And sometimes then they just get into resentment, Bill, and you don't really figure stuff out because you're just miserable, which I get it. We all get stuck in stuff, right? So here's what I've been looking at. And here's kind of what I'm weighing and here's kind of what I'm thinking. I've learned in my life, you can have all the emotions, deep emotions, deep loving emotions for somebody you want. And if it's not gonna work out, it's not gonna work out. But why doesn't it work out? Because you need more than deep emotions. And this is a really interesting, I think, fact toy that I've learned in my life. You need to make sure that both of your baggages, they line up. And nobody ever told me any of that, right? Like, I remember, the type of advice I remember hearing is, you want to date somebody who's your best friend. And it would be like, oh, so date somebody you have no feelings for? Like, it was a really weird concept. But later, I, I understood what, in a sense, was trying to be said. And I think some of that was, make sure you are with somebody that you know you get along with, that you click with on a personality level, on a baggage level, and then feelings can, you know, many times develop out of that. Now that makes sense, right? But I didn't understand that for a really long time. And, and I think there are two big elements to making a relationship. By the way, this isn't even about what I'm talking about. I'm just kind of going through some of the moves I've learned. Two big elements to making a relationship work. Um, well, three. Number one, you've got to be wanting and willing to make positive changes in your life to make it work. That's one big thing, which a lot of people aren't, right? And that's just what it is. You have to you know, want to grow together and you have to want to both make positive changes towards the future for each other and for yourselves. You need to learn how to compromise but not compromise away things that are important to you and who you are. So that's one thing. But two big things that you have to have, because let's say you have that. Let's say you're two people that have the will and you want to work together. You can have all the feelings you want. On a personality level, you two have to match up in a way that's uplifting for one another and not grating on one another. And then the second thing, and this goes hand in hand with that, you have to make sure your baggage lines up. What do I mean by that? Wherever you both have hurt, have trauma, have things that you have to heal, you have to make sure that those specific issues are gonna line up so that you two can help one another with each other's baggage and so that your baggage, because of your strengths, your weaknesses, your personality, aren't weighing one another down. Like, okay, here's a for instance. There was a guy I was really, really in love with for years, years. Um, and it's hard because like with this person, um, first of all, the person has moved on, married, has a family, very happy for them in their situation, right? And what I had to understand, there are a couple things I understood about this, but <clears throat> I, you know, I looked at this and there were two big things I finally understood one day about this situation. When I say I was very much in love, it didn't mean like I wasn't obsessively thinking about the person or, you know, wishing I could want to be with them. I was actually frustrated going, I just want to move on. Oh, I just still keep coming up sometimes. And what I realized is, number one, I was hanging on to 
a connection with this person because I didn't have the faith in myself that I could have that kind of connection with somebody else because I never have. I've been in, and I've had romance, I've been in love. This was very different. Um, it was like on a deeper spiritual level that I, I rarely find for me. Uh, number two, and I think this was, uh, this was very important as well with that person. Um, I had to look at it and I had to go, we both, our personalities do not match up. Even if things would have worked out, it probably wouldn't have worked out because even though, you know, me and this person, we've had a lot of feelings for each other at times. We've really cared about each other. We, our strengths, weaknesses, our baggages, our personalities in an intimate setting would not match up. They just wouldn't. They just wouldn't match up. And understanding that and then all of a sudden seeing, why am I holding on to this person? Oh, because I don't believe I can have a better connection with somebody else. That really freed me. And it took a while because you know how sometimes you can know something, but it doesn't quite click in your system yet as like knowledge and truth that you can actually feel the effects of the change, right? So that's what's happened with me. But those are two things I feel like we don't really hear about that I feel like should be discussed with young people when it comes to relationships. I just feel like with young people, young people, I feel so bad for murder. Um, with, you know, when it comes to like preteens, teenagers, people in their 20s. I feel like the, I just feel like we don't give them enough tools in the world to navigate the world um, emotionally and not just with relationships, but I mean, in general, we should have classes on how to deal with your emotions, how to have emotional self-control. Like we should have classes on these things. And yet I feel like we have a system that's designed and wants to kind of keep us miserable because then we make poor choices and certain people can profit off that. Welcome to Merck in 2020. 2020 is shining a big light on a lot of stuff, isn't it? Um, but there is a deeper thing I want to get to in this video about relationships, because those are two things I've really been seeing, you know, that I've looked at. But there's another big thing that I feel like keeps coming up for me as I analyze, because a part of me has been like, OK, like, you know, when I actually look my best and right now, I think I'm probably 40, 30 or 40 pounds from that. Hopefully by my birthday in six months, I'll be able to be super small again and be myself. Um, you know, I look okay. I'm not the greatest looking thing in the world and I'm not trying to be, but I, you know, I like who I am. I like how I look. People tend to find me attractive ish depending, you know, but that's also subjective, you know, depending on what you deem is attractive. Right. But here's what I've been thinking about. Even if let's say, let's entertain the idea for fun that I could, you know, get my finances in a great place again. And I could have at least a good chunk of my health back, which we are working towards. And I do have not independent yet, not fully functional, but the fact that I can sit here and do this and not be having an asthma attack like I did in other videos, fantastic, right? What I've had to understand about myself is that I come with a lot of baggage, right? And it's something I've recognized. And it's funny, I used to think that I wasn't a high maintenance person to date or to be with because I'd be like, oh, I don't wear makeup. It doesn't take me much time to get ready. And I would be like, I'm a cheap date. And I laugh now because I'm like, oh, my young 25 year old self didn't understand anything. And I realize now actually to some people I could be looked at as high maintenance because, you know, as you guys know, who've watched this, I have issues with not having a family. The family I do are very toxic and not safe for me. They are not safe people. That in itself brings a whole host of issues, not to mention all the issues of anxiety, depression, and paranoia that can come with chronic illness and kind of looking over my shoulder going, okay, When's my body going to do something? And when am I, you know, laid out for six months? And, and, and there's a lot there. And I realize for a lot of people, that's a lot to take on. And something I've understood about myself is I'm kind of, I've been told this in my life and I didn't understand it until probably the last year or two. I've been told I'm intense and aggressive. And I'm like, but I'm super nice. Or I try to be super nice. And obviously not all the time that there's restrictions on that. Sometimes you got to stand up for yourself, which y'all have seen me do. And I'm like, but I try to be super nice and super friendly and this and that. And it's like, yeah, and I realized, but it's not about that. I've been through a lot of stuff that has caused lots of emotions. I can be intensely happy or I can be very, very sad, you know? Um, and most of the time I'm just fairly happy unless something's going on that would be situational, situational, <laughs> situational that would call for that, right? But I have a lot of baggage and I'm a very unique person. And I don't mean that like I'm tooting my own horn. This is something that's very irritating for me. Things that are hard for people to do are easy for me and the easy things are hard. It's always been this way with me. So for instance, I could make a YouTube channel and work my butt off and get 100,000 subscribers and millions of views in three months, which is very difficult to do and a lot of people can't do that. Yet there are certain things like 
that like, you know, being able to celebrate a family holiday, I don't get to do that, <laughs> you know, in a way that I really can or feel comfortable with, you know, just the simple things. And I'm sure there's other examples I could bring up where I'm a complete moron that I'm not thinking about. Um, but I'm a very different person. Uh, not good, not bad, not higher, not lower, not above, not below, just different. And I think because of the types of things I've gone through without having a lot of stability in my life that I'm continuing to build, I'm probably not an easy person to date because of that. Um, and I've kind of recognized that. But this is what I've been thinking of, and not just about myself, but in general. So when it comes to people having issues and arguments in relationships, where does this stem from? Well, first, there's the base stuff, right? There's the stuff about your ego. You know, the ego is the thing that attaches to things. It's the thing that says, uh, you know, that you are a self and you attach to wants and desires and, you know, you you have things that aren't necessarily for your best and highest good and they pump you up. And sometimes they are and you still kind of have an ego about it. And ego, um, negative, repetitive thought patterns. And a one big one, I think, for a lot of people is trauma. So sometimes there's just people screwing each other up because they have their own sets of issues. They have their selfishness. They have their ego. They have their wants. And their egos clash and they don't want to fix that. I'm not referring to that, but I'm referring to what about people who really care about each other that just can't make it work? And one big thing I feel like my generation grew up with that maybe the boomers didn't or the great, well, the greatest depressioners, they went through some stuff. Um, but I feel like that, you know, can be kind of hard to relate to is we were a generation that we've kind of grown up in poverty. We've really grown up in a lot of poverty. And I think poverty that the boomers don't understand. I'm not putting boomers down. I'm happy y'all had, you know, you guys had some, a great economy and wealth growing up. I'm, I'm not, I'm not attacking y'all. I'm just saying there's a difference, right? And when you're in states of poverty, I feel like it's kind of impossible to do anything because when poverty is there, how do you find stability in anything? You don't. And I feel like I'm a prime example of that. My stability has always been shot and I'm always looking to try to, you know, build wealth because in my situation, there's no other way for me to survive in the body I'm in. I kind of, I kind of have to get rich or I'm not going to be here just because of the way my body is and my situations. It's, it's a survival thing. But this is one thing I've looked at because I feel like I've had in my life and I've seen it with other people, good people that really care about each other, but because they are in a constant struggle for survival, it's so stressful. That stress, you end up not even meaning to, taking it out on one another at times. And even if you're trying to be aware of it, you're trying to fix it, things are so stressful, it ends up being so much stress that you can't focus on the connection and building that in a positive way because you're so focused on trying to survive and then those energies end up grading off of each other that many times that can just kill a connection that a person has. And I've taken this a step further, guys. I've really been sitting and thinking about it and I'm like, how much does poverty really play a role in all of our lives being miserable? And by the way, we know some people that have everything in the world and they're still miserable. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about people who have entitlement issues or people who, you know, just haven't tried to really search in their self for happiness and do that inner in-depth work. But I feel like even like, okay, and I don't want to get too much into this, but let's say that the issues, the minority issues we have in this country, I have to be very careful how I say things because of YouTube. Even if I'm saying something I think is positive to society. But there's a lot of inequalities with minorities and I've kind of broken it down to, I think a lot of it is financial inequality and a lot of it is, uh, in my opinion, a forced form of poverty. Now, that chasm is closing because at this point, a lot of people, are, a lot of my generation, we, we've, we're in a similar state. Um, so, I, you know, that, that is closing, but it still has made, you know, the, the financial gaps, I feel like, more than anything. And of course, there's the, you know, there's always judgments and preconceived notions and, and, and different hierarchies of different classes of people. I'm not saying that that's not there, but what I'm saying is when you boil it down, what helps make all that fair? What helps make a even playing field? And that is getting people out of poverty. And I feel like on this planet, I feel like we should Maybe if we're trying, how do I put this? I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do, right? I'm not trying to be like a right fighter necessarily, but I've been looking at how do we fix certain issues. And I feel like one big thing is I think we should all try to focus on ending poverty for as many people as we can around the planet and at least start in our country. And I now kind of understand, I think the term reparations, I think that's where some of that is coming from. While I don't know how it would make that work 
I feel like we have to do it for everybody, but also let's help the most disenfranchised first, the minorities, the you know disabled, the chronically sick. And this is something I've really, really been thinking about. I, I really hope with 2020, the light that can be shown at this time um, in our country and around this world, especially in our country, is we need to put an emphasis on healthcare and we need to put an emphasis on getting ourselves out of poverty. And I hear people say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but what if you have a government that has desecrated your health by poisoning your food and water and they've taken away your bootstraps and said, you're not allowed to have bootstraps. What are you supposed to do? I think this is the collective thing that we have to do. And I've just been kind of looking at it going to the people who've been able to continue healthy, sustainable relationships. Sound off in the comments, bravo. I literally don't know how you do it. I feel like that sounds like a put down and it's not. I'm being, I'm being sincere. I don't know how you guys do it and I'm impressed. And maybe it's because of my situation, right? Maybe it's because I have a different situation so it's hard for me to relate or understand, which, you know, more power to it if that's the case. But like I said, this is just something <clears throat> I feel like I've been thinking about and analyzing and I feel like so many relationships can end as a result of poverty. But when I say poverty, I even mean ill health in that because typically when you have ill health, you're going to go into poverty. Even if you have help around you, you're going to go into poverty. You're not going to have any money. <laughs> that's Because you can't work a lot of times. That's what happens. And I feel like if we can help pull ourselves out of negative health and out of poverty, we could get to a place where we could actually connect as, as people and enjoy connecting on a whole nother level. So this is just something I've been thinking about and I wanted to know what you guys think. So sound off in the comments and let me know, like the video, do whatever you want to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've been thinking maybe I'll try to upload regularly here, but I'm just, I do three videos a day on the other channel. I'm so tired and I love it. It's not a complaint, but I'm still recovering from being sick. So this is a lot of hours talking in front of a camera. These videos are fun because I can just kind of you know, brain dump on y'all and give some perspective and see what you guys think. Um, you know, I don't expect these videos to go any place or do well. It's just, this is just fun for me. It's a fun little creative outlet. But if you want to see me, you know, every day and you really want to see me consistently, Katie's Insight is where I'm going to be, which is my other channel. And it's, uh, that's where I talk about finance and stimulus news. I'm trying to help you guys find stimulus money while this craziness is going on. And maybe I can help try to contribute to finding positive solutions in some way to helping people uh, stay afloat or stay out of poverty or shift that. That's what I would like to try to contribute if I'm able to. Um, yeah, but let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. I'm really curious if you like videos like this because um, I can do more more videos like this that uh, you know just kind of give different perspectives. And I enjoy it and I hope you enjoy it too. So, okay guys, take care, blessings. Thanks so much for watching and listening and let me know what you think. And otherwise, I'm gonna go relax. <laughs> Like I said, if you see more videos over the next few days, I, I just, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun. I'm just trying to have fun with y'all. And I'm in my rainbow shirt. All right, take care. I will talk to y'all soon. Hugs and kisses. Bye, guys.